The NFL is probably the most dangerous sports in the world. But have you ever wondered what it's like to get tackled by one of these big ass players? Well, today, we're going to find out what it's like. Alright, so these are some of the closest and most dangerous tackles the NFL player has ever received. So let's take a look. These are the times NFL players almost died on the field. And first Damn. up, let's look at Johnny Knox's injury. Wait. Because Knox was just getting his feet wet when tragedy struck. He seems familiar. After less than three NFL seasons, Knox's career came to an abrupt ending on December 18th, I think 2011. I know this. On this particular day, Knox received a deadly blow from the Seahawks' Anthony Hargrove, causing a fumble. Following the fumble, Knox pursued I saw that. the ball, only to be tackled at an awkward position. Oh my by god! Harvard. This left Knox with a serious spinal cord injury. His his neck snapped and his upper fucking body snapped, bro. That was disgusting. As he sat on the ground for several minutes before a stretcher carried him off the field. Immediately after the injury, Knox went into surgery to stabilize an injured vertebra, wondering if he'd ever walk again. Fast forward to today, and Knox is back on his two feet. He also settled with the NFL for $500,000. However, not all players are this lucky. $500,000 $500, for potentially being in a wheelchair for the rest of your life. I'm not gonna lie, the NFL should have fucking gave him more, bro. Because one player not suffered a whopping nine concussions, and another player was paralyzed for several minutes. And you don't even want to know what happened to Daryl Stingley. But first, what? let's talk about Rashad Johnson. See, in 2013, Johnson was facing the Saints when he suffered a truly unforgettable injury. Well unforgettable for anyone else who loses their finger because johnson he lost his finger at the exact moment it happened that said he does remember the play it happened with five minutes left in the first half johnson broke away from a blocker to tackle darren sproles oh my god afterwards oh my god. Oh my johnson god. remembered oh my god. his oh my hand god. being oh my god so trainers oh cut off his left glove only to find out the tip of his oh middle god. finger oh was missing oh my Jeez, god that's terrifying but do you know who else couldn't catch a break? Jordan. Wait, how did he lose his, the tip of his middle finger? Like, I can't imagine how you lose your finger unless like you something really sharp cuts it. How do you lose the tip of his free? Yo, because that's the dude so suffered nine great. recorded concussions in 10 years. Damn. I Wait, wouldn't that, even wish that on my isn't worst Isn't career enemy. ending? Nine this concussions? This also explains why Reed didn't play a full NFL season in his entire seven-year career. Yo. The same can't be said for Ryan Shazier, because Shazier suffered an injury so vicious, it ended his career in a heartbeat. The date was December 4th, 2017. Oh my God. Shazier was on pace to make his second straight Pro Bowl, and the Steelers held the best record in the AFC. Everything seemed so perfect. That was until Shazier attempted a head first tackle, which left him ah! unable to move his Wait, legs. Wait, I thought he was the receiver for a second. In I don't one know moment, why. Shazier went from an all pro linebacker to learning how to walk again. That's a harsh reality to face. But Shazier didn't let this bump in the road get him down. Instead, he continued to push forward by attempting an NFL comeback. Nowadays, Shazier- Hell no. Hell no. I will retire ASAP. If I if I had a career anything that would fucking put me that could put me in a wheelchair for the rest of my life, I'm not going back. I'm not going back to NFL. My trauma will be so huge, bro. I'm not going back. He went back. That's crazy. Good for him though, but easier is wow. not only walking, but jogging as well. He has wow, also made wow. significant strides in his personal life, such as marrying Michelle Rodriguez 17 months after the injury. This okay. brings us to Chris Spielman 
who wow. has also been through his fair share of adversity. Wow. Because in 1999, Spielman went from the pinnacle of his career to stepping away from football altogether. As the story goes, Spielman was playing the sport he loved when he suffered a nasty neck injury. Turns out, the injury was so painful that Yo. it left Spielman paralyzed for several minutes. Yikes. That's so dangerous, But if you isn't thought it? Spielman's injury was brutal, you have to hear about Joe Theismann. Nah, uh, While Theismann is mainly known for his illustrious accomplishments, such as winning a Super Bowl with the Redskins, it wasn't <laughs> all roses, roses and sunshine for the two-time pro bowler. See, back in 1985, Theismann suffered a life-altering injury against the Giants. In Ooh, one particular Giants. play, Lawrence Taylor sacked uh, Theismann oh so God, viciously Taylor that he him? suffered a compound fracture of the tibia and fibula. Fucking crazy, this left bro. Theismann in such a vulnerable state that he recalls, almost immediately, from the knee down, all the feeling was gone in my right leg. To make matters worse, one of Theismann Fuck out on national television. Wait a second. I thought the NFL Wait, was supposed what? to be PG. Anyways, let's move on Wait, to an incident which was both saying? comical and painful for a particular Bears what? defender. In 2014, there Bro. wasn't a lot of optimism for the Bears. It was already October and their season seemed to be over before it even started. However, the lack of team success wasn't going to stop Lamar Houston from having fun. Because in a late blowout against the Patriots, Houston recorded his first sack of the season. This inevitably led to a celebration. Only, the celebration didn't go so well. Since wow. Houston tore his ACL in the middle of it. Wow, he I didn't even know NFL players were capable of looking that stupid on the football field. That said, he tore his ACL consider Houston lucky. Because his injury is laughable compared to Reggie Brown's life-threatening injury. During the 1997 regular season finale, Jesus. emotions were riding high for Brown. After all, his teammate... Bro, look at these tackles, bro. Th that... He just got attacked head-on by three people. Barry Sanders was just yards away from eclipsing the 2,000-yard rushing mark. But in a moment, when Sanders was oh. almost certain to be the center of attention, Brown suffered a spinal cord injury that gathered ah! the attention of the entire NFL world. Because, unlike traditional injuries, Brown was lying on the ground. Yo, the scariest injuries are spinal or neck. Because the if you get hurt from any of those, you could you could be either paralyzed for the rest of your life, or be in a wheelchair for the rest of your life, or just just be a vegetable, bro. These are some scary ass injuries, for bro. Air. It was so intense that That's, some players were praying, wow, others were bro, kneeling, wow. and multiple players were crying. Bro, Thankfully, I can't, the team bro. physician eventually helped Brown regain his breath after applying CPR for wow. fifteen minutes. He but almost now, died. Let's literally? transition to a more recent injury scare. Back in 2019, the Cowboys were battling the Seahawks Wait, was in this, the playoffs. Was it Dak Prescott? When the world saw something truly disgusting. It was Dak Prescott. This right? was, was a leg dislocated or ankle suffered by Cowboys receiver Wait. Alan Hearns. Oh, it's not because Dak. when Hearns was tackled, his ankle was facing ah! the exact opposite direction. Thankfully, the doctors popped the ankle back into place immediately following the play. Oh, that okay. said, Hearns still faced a lot of pain in his ankle over the next few months. Because unless you're a contortionist, ankles aren't meant to be moved like that. Anyways, this brings us to one of the most heartbreaking injuries of all time, which is Jack Tatum's head-on hit on Daryl Stingley. The hit was so cold oh! that it gave Stingley a severe spinal he cord got, injury. Oh, another what separates yo, these this are injury scary, from the rest yo. so far is its aftermath. At the time of the injury, Stingley was just 26 years old. Wow. My man had his whole life wait, ahead of him. Wait, was that his picture when he was playing? So this is the aftermath, right? And the other picture is like a like just 26 years old. Beforehand, my man had his. Why does he look younger? And whole look life at this, bro. Maybe because the mustache. And then, in the blink of an eye, Stingley was in a wheelchair. Less than three decades later, a grievous injury took Stingley's life. 
prematurely at just 55 years young. I don't know what I was expecting. I was expecting like a good recovery like the other players, bro. But wow, Kinda that took his me life. Of the one player who almost lost his life at a training camp fight or the time another player's family was robbed at the airport. And I know you want to hear more about that. So click on this video right now. That's crazy, bro. W video.